Hello, we're back again. And uh, in honor of Labor Day and perhaps having some crazy work environments in the past, maybe together. Maybe. Maybe alone. We've decided to list our 10 favorite movies that are about work, take place in a workplace, or focused around a job. And I'm going to kick it off with one that is the most obvious that I know everyone is thinking about, and that is... Um, yeah, I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday. Yeah. It's Office Space. Um, yeah, everyone's favorite movie, about 36 pieces of flair. 37? Ooh, that was close. 36, 37? As long as you have um, a minimum of 15. Just a minimum of 15. Yeah, exactly. Um, a red stapler that must stay in place. And uh, my favorite part, when they beat the shit out of their computer equipment. <laughs> so we've all had that moment. We've all had that. It so, was, um, wasn't it shot in Austin, too? It was shot in Austin. It, unfortunately, though, Tchotchkes, which was not a Tchotchkes, it was uh, Alligator Grill, is, is then changed to something else, and they ripped it all out. So there's, like, no... Hmm. There's none of that fun stuff left. And the other is just like an office park, like strip mall building where the Inatech where the Inatech office was. So that's kind of it. It doesn't really exist any longer. But you know, it exists in our hearts. <laughs> um, slow clap for Danny. Um, <laughs> so I'm going back to the eighties. I feel like the eighties was just totally ripe with these workplace like quirky comedies or, I don't know, a little bit of the coming-of-age drama. And I'm starting with um, The Secret of My Success. I feel like Michael J. Fox was possibly in a few of these, but this one was my favorite. He was like the corn-fed Midwesterner, just graduated from college, is like ready to take over a company, except you can't do that when you're 22. Starts working at his uncle's company in the mail room, and then just like, boom, puts on a suit, starts sleeping with someone who's like in the company, and now he's an executive. It's kind of an incredible plot line, and it had a really good soundtrack that my husband that's into, like, really quirky music listens to a lot. I don't know, but I'm putting it on there. I love it. I'm going to go into a movie that is a little close to home. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite movies. Um, there are much, much better movies about uh, my workplace, maybe broadcast news, um, but that's not fun. You know, those realistic ones, those aren't fun. So I'm going to go with Morning Glory which starred uh, Rachel McAdams and Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford's kind of like the crotchety old man anchor who's like warring with Diane Keaton, right? Is that who plays the female yep. anchor? And, um, you know, Rachel McAdams, McAdams is like this little spunky, like not long out of college, like I'm going to make a career in journalism and kind of gets a reality <laughs> slap in the face when she gets to this job and it is not at all what she expected and she's really just like, hurting cats and you know that's what a lot of both of our jobs are like so I can relate to that so that's why I'm picking it. I like your choice because it bleeds very well back into my to my uh, stuck in the 80s next choice which is which is Baby Boom with Diane Keaton. I love this movie. It's like like an act in the food industry and then she inherits this random cute British baby and I think the baby's British or am I thinking three men and a baby? I don't, I don't know. Let's make the baby British. The baby's name was Elizabeth. I do remember that, which I feel like is very British. So she gets this random British baby, and, like, I can relate to this. How do you do the working mom thing? You, it's really hard. And so it's just now it's really, really uh, rings true to me as far as, like, demands of a career while trying to take care of a young child and just, like, your focus is split. So she does what I would love to do on some occasion, which is just to say screw it all and run off to the country and buy a farmhouse and marry a veterinarian. I mean, I don't need that part, but it was, I just love it. It's great. And she makes homemade hey, applesauce. Did you make the baby British to go back to our first vlog ever when I, we tried to speak in English accents because I was going to move to London? Well, that's always a looming threat while this campaign goes on. If Donald Trump it's wins, true. you are going to have British babies, so we should prepare for it. It's true. Sticking with your 80s theme, let's go with probably one of the most classic workplace comedies of the 80s. And that is nine to five, 
Um, you know, not really a movie that we could relate to just because of the era. Although I'm not going to say that we are never been work, we've never worked in a man's world. That movie's just made by the three women, which we have discussed in past that we can't wait to see Dolly Parton pop up on uh, Frankie and Gra Grace and Frankie to just reunite those three because uh, Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda and uh, Dolly Parton are just like comic genius together. That, that's really what made that movie. Who can forget that theme song, Ashley? You want to sing it for us? Uh, you're the songstress here. Go for it. Well, no. Now I don't want to sing. You put, no. Too much pressure. Nine to five. What a way to make a living. Something goes right here. Na, 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 na. I am going with a little bit one uh, one that's from the 2000s. I've actually gone ahead and just advanced us by two decades. A um, little bit more obscure. It's called In Good Company. I don't know if you ever saw this. It has Dennis Quaid and Topher Grace when we were at the height of like Topher Grace's charm moment when he was in every movie. Um, I just like this movie because I think it's really telling of the workplace now, which is you have these like very smart, intelligent, kind of 50 plus aging men that are still very good at what they do. And then they've got these like 22 year old, like kind of think tank uh, uh, entrepreneurial types that are coming in and taking all the younger jobs. And so this was the first movie I ever saw that really kind of illustrated this concept. And I thought the chemistry between the two guys was awesome. And Scarlett Johansson was in it as well because she's Dennis Quaid's daughter and he starts sleeping with her. And that's funny in itself. Wait, Dennis Quaid starts sleeping with her. Cause that's just gross. Now, this is not that's, a Josh Duggar scandal. That's moment. what you said. You made it. No. You said. She, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Topher Grace starts sleeping with her. That's a more appropriate plot, plot line. Okay. Glad we cleared um, that up. Yeah. So, anyways, I thought the movie was really good. If you haven't seen it, it's one of those you see it on Netflix. Just Sleeper hit. It's better than watching the unauthorized Full House movie. So. Oh, and that... That Hallmark movie with Candace Cameron that okay. I tried to watch the other okay. night. But anyway, all right, so keeping with the 2000s and um, a movie that had a fantastic soundtrack for that time, um, I'm just going to sing you the song from the rooftop, Sugar High, or the better part, Rexy, You're So Sexy. Uh, Empire Records. Empire Records is uh, one of my favorite kind of offbeat 2000s movies. I mean, it, I feel like I didn't even know it was exist, existed when it was in the theater. It was like after it came to video. Maybe it went straight to video, but I don't think so. I think it just maybe had yeah. a small release. Um, I mean, it had a decent cast, the people in it. Uh, um, Liv Tyler. Liv Tyler, thank you. And our favorite, Ethan Embry. Yep. And then the other guys, like, there's a couple of guys that, like, you know, you're like, oh, that guy's familiar. He's been in some other things. Um, but, uh, and then, of course, Rex Manning, who was yeah. in Grease 2. We all know how I feel about Grease 2. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's just a really fun. Oh, and Renee Zellweger. She's oh, right. I was like, wait, she's there's high. one that's, like, the skeezy one. Who is it? That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that must have come out, like, right after Dazed. She had that little bit part in Dazed and Confused, and I feel like this was, like, her first real role but um yeah and again if you haven't seen it before check it out i think it'll still hold up i think it'll be entertaining even uh if you can't relate to that kind of grunge era which really wasn't grunge Did, when i don't know it was very like yeah it was like the gen x ensemble piece like yeah singles go. reality bites this um i feel like it has a cult following so i think you're right i think it's gonna make a comeback we're gonna see some sort of reboot of it one before you take yes. us into the end, because I feel like you have a better, a stronger movie to end with. Um, for the ninth pick, I'm going to go with Moneyball. Now, there were a few different sports movies that we tossed around, and Moneyball seemed to be the one that is the most focused on the job aspect. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's the most interesting about it was it's kind of a movie that it was, it was about the Oakleys in 2001, and it was kind of taking sports in a new direction into a new generation. I think it's something that we're all dealing with right now, how our industries are kind of having to shift to more forward thinking. And so that's what I, the aspect I like about it is that the, the scout brought in this Harvard guy who was using data and statistics to analyze how good players would be, and everyone kind of thought he was crazy. And then guess what? Everyone started doing it. So it sounds a lot like social media. That's fun. Awesome. So, um, on that note, why don't you take us into the final? Well, film? 
I gotta, I gotta tell you, I know that math isn't your thing. You're not, you don't like math. No. So that was actually our eighth one because, um, oh, it was? yeah, no, but, but I think you're wrong. No, you've got, you've got oh, one. Oh, that's like, another one. one. Yeah. You've got a really good one. I want you to do. It is my math problem. You're right. I stink at math. Okay. It's okay. So Who do I need a calculator to count down to 10? <laughs> That's why we didn't do 20. 10 seemed basic. Two hands. Okay, so let me go into number nine then, since my last one's eight. And number nine is yet another movie that I can relate to. I'm not going to say for my current situation, maybe past situations. It is The Devil Wears Prada, which oh, we've yeah. discussed pre in a previous blog about, you know, it was, it was based on... Anna Wintour and the author had worked for her at Vogue, and that's what the story was based on, this Miranda Priestly character that's played brilliantly by... Uh, that woman, that woman that wins all those awards. Yeah, you know, the one that wins all the Oscars. Mm -hmm. um, who refers to her assistant as Andrea, because she just Andrea. can't bring herself to say Andrea. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just the way, like... I love how she just sets this girl up to fail. Like, there's no way you can win. It's like she asks the question, please bore someone else with your questions. <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, it's highly entertaining and, like, painful at the same time. Because for those of us who've been in situations like that before, it's like, oh, God, I feel for you, chick. But, um, you know, we all get through it. You know, these are workplace movies. It seems like we focused a lot on office places, but that's not the only place people work. So I'm gonna end. Um, I'm gonna end with Pretty Woman, which I think we also highlighted on that same blog. But I mean, hello, it's like the perils of being a hooker. That's fantastic. She's a working girl. She's a working girl. She's a working girl, which is, I guess, different than that movie Melanie Griffith was in. This is this movie. Um, <laughs> So first when I was thinking about this, I was like, well, yeah, he was like a business mogul. Oh, but she was a hooker. And that's way more cool to like focus on like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, you have those down there and I have these down there. I'm working all these stars. <laughs> my favorite. Everybody come to Hollywood got a dream. What's your dream? My dream is to own Esther Williams down to whatever. The <laughs> yeah. Um, and because now, like, kids are like kids are like, who the hell is Esther Williams? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Is her star near Ashley Olsen? And maybe near Mariah Carey, who just got one recently. Um, Again. So, and because if we're going to focus on workplaces where you take your clothes off, we might as well have one to grow on. Magic Mike. Let's go. That is all in the, in the immortal words of Miranda Priestly. That is all.